Hello, and welcome to this episode of Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. My name is Evan Green. I'm the firearms historian for the museum. And over the last four years now, I've been working with the staff to update the inventory on the firearms in the museum's permanent collection. So I'm going to title this particular episode, Don't Clean Your Gun. Well, what does that mean? What we have here are two very similar firearms. They are both 1859 Sharps breech-loading carbines. They have both, they were both converted in 1867 to a centerfire cartridge, caliber 50-70. In their original configuration, as a percussion firearm, they were still breech loading. You loaded a paper cartridge into the chamber, closed the action, cocked the hammer, and these were unique in that there were two ignition methods. One was the standard percussion nipple that took a percussion cap. But this particular patent of Sharp's carbine also had a, a magazine, a spring-loaded magazine, that would feed a combustible pellet under the hammer. So you had your choice of using either that pellet, or if you were out of those, you could use a standard percussion cap to ignite the charge in the chamber. These were, again, uh, 1858, developed in the run-up to the Civil War, and used extensively in that conflict in their original percussion uh, configuration. And this little unit right here that's uh, kind of hiding behind the hammer controlled the feed of those ignition pellets into the system. And since it did not interfere with the conversion to a centerfire cartridge, uh, they just left those on there. Although they often replaced the buttstock if you look uh, right here, you can see that there's a little notch in that butt plate. In the original percussion carbine, there would have been a patch box, which is basically a little compartment with a trap door on it, where you could keep percussion caps or extra ammunition or whatever. But when they were converted to cartridge, they did away with that, put different butt stocks on, but retained the original uh, butt plate. So why did I say don't clean your gun? Because you look at this one and you go, well, gee, it's kind of messy, right? I mean, it's got, it's a little bit rusty and, and to the point that some, you can't read some of the stampings and, and the stock has been broken here. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you cleaned it up? Well, somebody did that to this one. Again, this is basically the same carbine but a previous owner has used a power wire wheel to clean all of the crust, all of the patina, all of the evidence of use off of the firearm. And by doing so, he basically destroyed the originality of the firearm and drastically decreased its collector value. So uh, if you have an antique firearm, you know, think twice before you get aggressive about cleaning it or polishing it or refinishing the stock or heaven forbid re-bluing it because you will have destroyed the character of that firearm and also have vastly decreased its value in the collector's market. So of course if you have modern firearms, your hunting rifle, your self-defense handgun, your goose hunting shotgun, uh, you need to clean those, you need to take care of those and, and uh, keep them well maintained to protect their value and make sure that they function as they're intended uh, when you need them. Uh, just a little short anecdote. My wife's grandmother had a brass candlestick that had been in the family since the Revolutionary War. And of course it had 200 years of wonderful patina on that brass candlestick. She was determined she was going to have it polished. She took it couple of different places. One guy just flat refused to do it, said, I'm not going to do that. The other guy begged her not to. 
my, finally, my wife said, listen, she's going to polish the dang candlestick. You just as well do it for her. But, you know, now we have a real shiny candlestick without uh, that 200 years of history attached to it. Same thing with firearms. Leave them alone. Leave them in their original condition. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching. If you have comments, uh, pop them into the section below or give us a call at the museum. We're always glad to talk to people about firearms and artifacts and Wyoming history. So thanks for watching.